Okay, we're starting to move out the uh, components. Uh, there's basically three uh, uh, test stand and cart components that we'll need for our for our testing of the uh, torch igniter. So uh, we just have these three little carts. This is just a little stand here. Um, this will support the uh, uh, some of the components for the igniter, and it'll also have the control box. We can kind of stand it off a little bit, get that kind of lined up. That's that's that unit. Um, the next one is a little propellant cart uh, that has the power supplies and the uh, controller box. That's the power supply for our uh, for our valve drivers. Um, <clears throat> how we operate is uh, we have this uh, relay box and then we have just a manual switch box that we use to manually cycle the valve. So on this test, we don't need to auto sequence anything. We just need to, uh, you know, kind of cycle the valves and see how they work and turn the hydrogen and oxygen off and on, and then, uh, you know, turn the spark off and on. And uh, we can do that from this, this little box kind of here. So that's our kind of our little wagon train of, of uh, components. And then the last thing is our, is our main test stand here. Um, and so we're gonna be wheeling this guy out. This is just has a, it's also on wheels. And we can just, you know, we can just push on that and kind of wheel it out. And it has all the equipment we need. To, you know, to get that going. So uh, we'll have a little little set of uh, wheeled carts that these will go out to our test stand. And so how we'll do that is um, these will be wheeled out uh, through through our uh, lab doors here. And these will go on out. And uh, then they'll go out through our main door here. And then all of this will go to our propellant uh, testing facility, which is shown right over there. And we'll see that in a few minutes. So the last piece of our test hardware is of course the major test stand here, which has the uh, igniter on it, um, as well as the additional plumbing. So we run it out on a, on a pallet jack. It's just a little bit smoother ride for the equipment as we roll it out to the test stand. So we're rolling it on out. You can see also in the background, there's our uh, plexiglass blast shield. That's just a kind of containment device that we use to, you know, accommodate for any, uh, how shall we say, unexpected dynamic disassemblies if we if we have that. We don't expect that here, it's pretty low energy, but uh, uh, it's there for, for safety. Because here at Turbo Rockin', you know, safety third. So uh, we've got our little guy here going, now we're just gonna start wheeling it out. wheeling it over to the test stand over there. Um, now that we've got it part way out, take care of a few things, keep going. So here we can see the test stand on the uh, pallet jack just makes it a little bit smoother ride. And uh, to the immediate right is the uh, portable uh, fragmentation shield. It's just a series of uh, plexiglass panels that can be uh, kind of maneuvered around. And then uh, in the far back on the, on the uh, left over there, you can see our uh, test stand port, that's uh, test bay number one. And so uh, we're just gonna be wheeling all our equipment out there. And so, uh, you know, we'll just kind of keep wheeling away here. Hope everything stays together. There's a lot of material on here and we have the, uh, the test stand is designed so that it, it's on linear bearings. You can kind of see those down there. Uh, and that allows us to uh, minimize the amount of uh, axial uh, uh, resistance so that we can make thrust measurements um, if, we, if we need to. You can see that purple cover um, on the uh, load cell if we need to make thrust measurements on this particular stand. This is rated up to oh, a couple hundred pounds. Uh, we're not going to be taking any thrust measurements. Uh, this is just the flow and a general tech checkout testing of the, uh, of the torch igniter. So we'll get this wheeled in position here um, and uh, get that all teed up. And then we'll also bring over our, uh, our portable uh, ballistic shield as well. Okay, now we're doing the final positioning of our test stand into the test bay. Just kind of wheeling it on here. And... These systems are all designed uh, to be mobile. 
so that we could set up and take down and didn't necessarily need any long-term positioning of the components, uh, for better or for worse. So, um, the good news is that you can get stuff in the weather and work out on it, you know, in a, in a nicer condition, you know, warm. He did a cool facility. The disadvantage is, is that uh, you're kind of limited on the size of the systems that you can uh, you can test. So, uh, because, uh, you know, it's still got to be portable. So, anyway, now we're just kind of positioning our, our test stand. Uh, here, it's going to fire out into the field and kind of, kind of see where it's generally going to. Um, and you can kind of see the, uh, the igniter right here, and it's going to be shooting out that way. Now we'll get this lowered, and uh, it should be pretty close to uh, having it in the right position. Now we're going to lower it. Pull power jack out of the way. And there you go. Test stand is now in position. And Bob's your uncle. Okay, we finished the setup uh, for the Gox uh, gaseous hydrogen uh, torch igniter testing. We're all set up here. You can kind of see the ensemble configuration. We've wheeled everything out and have all our connections made. So uh, this is the test article that we're testing right here. This is the little torch igniter. So we'll have fuel coming in here. We'll have oxidizer, uh, oxygen coming in here. We have a little spark plug on it. And then the fire will come out this tip. And uh, this unit is mounted on a, on a slide rail here, um, which can extend and retract, um, allowing the uh, torch to be positioned in front of the turbo rocket uh, prior to start. And then when the turbo rocket engine starts, we can retract it and get, it, get out of the way of the, of the fire of that. Um, so uh, everything's been hooked up. Um, so on our system, we have uh, solenoid valves for the oxidizer, the gaseous fuel, and then there's a nitrogen purge here that comes in through these check valves and purges out the system during testing. Um, and then we uh, um, have the propellant lines um, that are shown here. This is for the uh, hydrogen, um, this is for the oxygen, and this is for the uh, gaseous uh, nitrogen, which is the purge. And uh, we've used this setup many times. Um, it looks a little, you know, kind of ramshackle, but uh, um, we use this system many times, so we have to be able to configure it for all sorts of different things. Um, and so uh, we're a very rapid response kind of configuration here. So a few other elements that are worth mentioning uh, that I'd shown before. You can see down there, that's the uh, neon sign transformer that provides the uh, um, the electrical uh, high voltage spark to the spark plug. Uh, we just control it through a, um, a, a wiring strip there. Uh, very easy and simple to hook up. Uh, the pneumatic control valve as shown previously, is shown here. Now we have it hooked up to the uh, pneumatic cylinder for the translation. You can see here some of our other uh, main control com components. This is the, the control box. Um, and so we have a power supply down here uh, that provides the uh, voltage uh, that we need, which is a 24 volts. Um, and uh, it's controlled through a series of uh, relays here, controlled by this manual switch box. So in our configuration that we're gonna do here, when we turn the system on, um, there's no power to the switch box right now, but when we turn the box on, then we'll be able to cycle the fuel uh, solenoid valve, the oxygen solenoid valve, and then when we're done testing, we can shut those off, and then we can use this to, to purge it. So that's uh, that's how that's kind of configuration. That's how that that's the configuration for that, and how we're how we're set up for that. We have the uh, plexiglass uh, fragmentation containment um, shield. That's just uh, kind of uh, you know in case there's any untoward kind of things that happen, we gives us a little protection here for the operators. Uh, this is a pretty low energy test, but uh, you know hey, better safe than sorry, and uh, so we try to. We try to adhere to those uh, safety principles. Over here, you can kind of see our gas supplies. We're just using standard uh, K-type bottles since we have relatively low flows. Um, hydrogen is here in a, a K bottle, uh, and the oxidizer is here also in a K bottle. The nomenclature has changed a little bit. I think these are called number two bottles now, but we call them Ks. And then we have a little bit bigger bottle for the gaseous nitrogen. That's a, a T bottle or a number three. Um, so the uh, nitrogen and the uh, oxygen just use standard, uh, you know, bottle-mounted uh, hand loaders, uh, hand regulators, provide the, uh, uh, the the regulated pressure uh, for those systems. 
and then we have uh, you know shut off valves on, on the system. For the hydrogen, uh, it was originally configured for a larger flow, so we we actually have a, a larger regulator for that. You can kind of see that unit here. It's a it's a dome loaded um, regulator, it gives us more capacity, and we use another hand loader um, for that. Uh, which loads the dome and provides us the, the pressure for that. So on our kind of panel here, um, this panel um, is the uh, tank, um, hydrogen tank uh, bottle pressure. And then uh, this larger um, gauge right here uh, is the uh, regulated pressure that we're providing to the, uh, to the dome. Uh, and it's basically the supply pressure that we're setting for the hydrogen side. And then uh, this is just a downstream pressure um, that is actually not hooked up at this point, we usually uh, have that hooked up so we can have a, a pressure measurement right at the uh, uh, right at the valve entrance, but we're not going to be needing that for this for this set of testing. So we use flex lines uh, for this um, that are you know uh, 3,000 psi G rated uh, 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 wire braid uh, stainless steel wire braid uh, hose uh, with a uh, Teflon uh, inner liner, and uh, that's worked well for our our system here. And so those kind of go over a blast shield and hook up to our test. This allows us for easy and fast hookup and uh, also allows us to, uh, when we're testing, if we want to do loading, uh, measure thrust loads on the, on the system. The flex lines kind of reduce the uh, uh, kind of additional loads. Uh, they, don't minim they don't eliminate it, but they, they kind of reduce it. So that's why you have that. Anyway, so that's our kind of test up. And so we're going to be testing here uh, in just a few minutes uh, or in a subsequent video, I should say. And uh, we'll see how, how it all looks.